morning grade seven. I hope you had a great weekend. Today is the second day of our review for our test tomorrow. So I'm gonna highlight some of the things that will be on the test. I also made this video based on a lot of your requests on the survey I did. So I'm gonna do my video in two parts. The first part will be on kind of on the first half of the chapter. And then the second part is really gonna focus on area and perimeter because that's what I had the most requests for. So thinking back, way back to the beginning of our unit, I want to review different angle relationships. So I've listed here on the side all the different angles, relationships that we've talked about. First thing I want to remind you of is that we have here is we have two parallel lines. Remember that these lines, they're parallel, which means that they will never ever cross. They could continue in that direction around the entire world and they would not cross each other. Then this line here that crosses our two parallel lines is called a transversal. And when we have a transversal cross two parallel lines, we end up with a lot of different angles. So we're gonna go through them one at a time. So the first thing we have is we have acute angles. Acute angles are angles that are smaller than 90 degrees. So two is acute, three is acute, six is acute, and seven is acute. So acute, smaller than 90 degrees. Think about acute baby, they're tiny and little. So acute angles are tiny and little. Then we have right angles. Now I don't have any right angles drawn for you, but I could do that for a second. I would assume that we're pretty familiar with right angles by now. So right angles are 90 degree angles. Often we see them by forming a little box. So here I have perpendicular lines because they cross at a right angle. So here we have our right angles. Then we have complementary angles. So let's, no, oops, we have obtuse. Sorry, I'm skipping ahead of myself. Obtuse angles are bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180. So one and four and five and eight. Bigger than 90, but less than 180. Now I didn't include this one on our list here, but straight angles are angles that are 180 degrees. So a straight angle is really just a straight line. That one's pretty easy to remember. Then we have complementary angles. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So if we go down here, I have this first angle right over here, and then this one over here, and together, no, I did that completely wrong. <laughs> Must be too late at night for me to be doing this. It's Saturday night for me right now. Sorry, grade seven. Let me try that again. Complementary angles are two angles that together add up to 90 degrees. So this is better. If I have this angle in here, and then I have this angle in here, those two together equal 90 degrees. So complementary, they add up to 90 degrees. Then what I think I was trying to say was supplementary. So supplementary are the two that add up to 180 degrees. So one and two together would be supplementary because you can see this line in the middle really is just cutting in, in pieces a supplementary or a straight angle. I could also say that five and seven are supplementary because together they form a straight line. Then we get into vertical and opposite angles. So our textbook calls them vertical. I personally prefer calling them opposite angles because they're angles that are opposite each other on intersections. So three and two are opposite, which also means that they are equal. Then we have one and four are opposite, which are equal. Five and eight are opposite and equal. And then seven and six are opposite and equal. So opposite vertical angles are equal to each other. Now, corresponding angles, I find are a little bit tricky to see. So what I think about corresponding angles, in this case, five and one are corresponding. So what I want you to picture is I want you to picture that this whole line shifts all the way up to this line over here. If you were to slide this original yellow line all the way up to here, one and five would slide right into place with each other. They're corresponding. So one and five are corresponding. Eight and four are corresponding. Then we'd have seven and three are corresponding. And then finally, six and two. 
So I think the corresponding are the trickiest ones to see because you almost need to picture this line sliding up to the other one and you can see that they're in the same kind of position. Okay, then we have the alternate interior and alternate exterior. So alternate interior, remember alternate means opposite. So they're opposite each other. And then interior, they're on the inside. So six and three, they're opposite each other. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. And then they're on the inside, okay? We're on the inside of our parallel lines. So three and six are alternate interior and then four and five are also alternate interior. So then if we think about alternate exterior, they need to be on opposite sides. Let's do alternate exterior in yellow. Opposite sides and on the outside of parallel lines. So one and eight are on opposite sides and they're on the outside of parallel lines. Same with two and seven. So the most important thing to remember about corresponding alternate exterior, alter, interior, and vertical and opposite is that they're equal to each other. So alternate interior equal to each other within that. Now, the reason this is helpful is because we can use that information to solve different angles. And I can think about it in so many different ways. So if I know that this angle is 65 degrees, I can figure out a ton of other angles based on that information. So let's just switch to a different color so we can see what we're doing here. So the first thing I can do if I want is I can figure out that eight is also 65 degrees. I can do that based on the fact that they are vertical or opposite angles. Then if I want, I can figure out that two is also 65 degrees. I can figure that out for two different reasons. First, I can know that two and eight are alternate interior angles, but I can also know that two and angle 65 are corresponding. It would slide right up into this spot. Then I can figure out that four is also 65 degrees because it's corresponding with eight down there or because it's opposite with number two. So I've already figured out four of my angles just using that information. Now let's say I wanna figure out angle seven. Well, I noticed that the 65 degree angle and angle seven together make a straight angle. So I can say that they are supplementary. One good way to remember supplementary is to remember that it is straight. They both start with S. So I then know that 180 degrees minus 65 will give me what angle seven is. So I get 115 degrees. I can apply my same logic. I can look for alternate exterior angles, which would be number one. Then I can say that three is the opposite or vertical to number one, and that it's the alternate interior of number five. Okay, so basically all information from the previous slide, we can use that to solve different angles. All right, let's do a quick review on congruent triangles. So congruent triangles, remember that congruent means they're exactly the same. That means their sides are the same, the angles are the same. They're the exact same triangle. Now there are three rules to help us know if triangles are congruent. The first one is the easiest one. It's side, side, side. So if I look here, let me get my highlighter out, I can see that AB is the same as ED. Those little notches tell me that. AC and EF are the same, AC and DF are the same, and then BC and EF are the same, okay? So because they have three sides that are the same, I know they must be congruent because of all three sides. If you think about it, I can't change the angles if all of my sides are the same, otherwise they wouldn't join up together to make a triangle. Then we have this one over here. I notice I have angle B is the same as angle Q, angle C and R are the same, and then I have two sides or sides that are the same. So this one is, I have an angle the same, a side the same, and an angle the same. Because if you think about it, if I have, this is all the same, I would have to have point A be the same as P in order to close up my triangle. That's why it works. Then our last one 
I have a side. Let's go like this. A side, an angle, a side. So we get side, angle, side. So on the quiz, basically what you're going to see is you're going to see a picture that's similar to this. And you're going to have to tell me what rule tells you that they are congruent. So that's what I'm looking for. So you just need to know the three, these three rules and be able to recognize it. But then we can also use information about congruent triangles to solve things. So if, if I told you that these are, well, these are actually similar triangles, can you figure out what angles two and three are? So these are not exactly congruent, so I should probably cross out my title. They're similar triangles. I'll probably more have a picture of uh, congruent triangles on the test, but we can still use similar triangles in this situation. So the first thing that we can do is we can notice, maybe you wanna even, if you're using a phone or an iPad, is turn your screen. And you can notice that these lines are actually crossing each other. So what we formed is we've actually formed opposite angles. So I right away know that two is 38 degrees. They're opposite angles. Now in order to find out angle three, I'm actually not going to really use information from this, um, this original angle because I now know that 2 is 38 degrees. What I do notice and is that these two lines over here are the same, which shows me that it's an isosceles triangle. One thing we didn't really talk about a ton in our lessons is that angles opposite um, congruent lines and isosceles triangles are the same. So what I know is, I actually know that this angle here, E, is the same as angle D. Now that's helpful for a couple reasons. I know that in a triangle, there's 180 degrees total. So if I already have used up the 38 degrees from angle C over here, I can do some subtraction. And I get... 142 degrees. Now that does not mean that angle E or 3 is 142 degrees. It means that D and E share those degrees equally. So I actually am going to split that by 2. So I get, doo -doo -doo, I get 71 degrees for each of these. Okay. So ignore my title. It's not a congruent type triangle, but it is about using different pieces of information to solve for different angles. All right, similar triangles using proportions is not going to be on the test. That's something that's pretty tricky to learn online. So I wanted you to try it in a lesson. I wanted you to be exposed to it. So you've at least seen it before you get to grade eight math, but I'm not going to test you on it. So you can skip that lesson in your review. All right, then we have quadrilaterals. Notice, by the way, I forgot to mention this, grade 7, but beside each slide, I tried to put the lesson number if you want to get more information. So remember when we did the quadrilateral lesson, your quiz was really based on true and false statements about different quadrilaterals and how they fit into different sections. So I might have a statement like, all squares are rectangles. Well, if we take a look at squares, we can see that going up... It is, in fact, also a rectangle. It's just a special kind of rectangle, so it would be true. But if I were to say to you, all rectangles are squares, that's not actually true. This square is a rectangle, but if I were to draw this rectangle, it's not a square because they don't all have equal sides. If I were to say all trapezoids are quadrilaterals, that's true because I'm going up this scale, but if I said all quadrilaterals are trapezoids, that's false. A trapezoid is only one kind of quadrilateral. I could have all different kinds. So those are the type of questions that are going to be showing up on your test on Tuesday. Speaking of quadrilaterals, you should have memorized by now that all the angles in a four-sided polygon or a quadrilateral adds up to 360 degrees. So in this case, if we want to solve for x, what I can do is I can add up the degrees that I have already used up. Now remember, this is in a very simple way getting you to use your information about angles. We know that that is 90 degrees. So we're going to add these up, 
and I get, if I do it correctly, oh, I'm going slow tonight, 17, 18, okay, 240. So I've used up 240, so I can subtract that from over here, and I should get 120 as my final answer for x, okay? So you'll be doing those types of questions on the quiz on or on the test on Tuesday as well. Here we have another quadrilateral. Now this is a specific kind of quadrilateral. It's a parallelogram. Remember that parallelograms have two parallel sides, two sets of parallel sides that will never cross each other. You can see that by their arrows going that way. What we also know about um, these types of parallelograms is that opposite angles have the same degrees. So what we can do is we can do this is 102 and then this is 78. If I were to add them up, I would in fact get 360 degrees. Okay, so it's again applying all your knowledge. When you come across a problem where you need to find an angle, don't think that there's not enough information. I always give enough information for you to solve it. All right, polygons. So this lesson we only covered pretty briefly. And I think a lot of us are very comfortable with naming polygons based on their signs. Now remember, these are regular polygons. For example, a pentagon, it means any shape that has five sides. But this one's a regular pentagon because all five sides are equal. That's what we're mainly talking about right now. Now, in your textbook, you have this formula. S equals N minus 2 one times 180 degrees. Now, S really means the sum. The sum of all the angles in a polygon is N minus 2. Now, N is actually the number of sides times 180 gives you the sum of the angles. Now take a look at this quadrilateral, which is also known as a square. We know that we have 90 degrees in each corner, and we know that that adds up to 360 degrees. Now, if we use this formula, S equals N minus two with the brackets, those are important, times 180, what we're saying is we're saying the sum of all the angles is the number of sides, so there's four sides, take away two times 180. So we end up with two times 180, which is really 360. So basically what we're doing is we're showing that this formula works for any sized polygon based on its number of sides. We can do the same thing with a triangle. We can take that because we know a triangle adds up to 180, but let's see if the formula works. S equals N minus two times 180. So now we have, well, how many sides does a triangle have? Three minus two times 180 gives me one times 180, which gives me one, which we already knew, but I'm showing you why the formula works. So this is helpful when we get to really large polygons where we're just told the number of sides. As long as you know the number of sides in a polygon and you can remember this formula, you can figure out how much the sum of the angles is. So let's say we had a polygon that had um, let's do 22 sides. I'm not sure what the name of that is. You could look it up. So there's 22 sides on this polygon. So I want to know what would the sum of the angles be? I can use my handy formula. I don't need to draw out a 22 sided polygon and measure it all. So I can do 22 minus 2 times 180. So then I get 20 times 180. And what I should get, 20 times 180, I will get 3,600 degrees. So if you drew a 22-sided polygon, the total of all the angles would be 3,600 